Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. Today we're going to be covering how to create the Doctor Strange portal using PaintShop Pro and some Particle Shop. So to get started, uh, the image that I'm working with here is this one of this seemingly traveler in this barren desert. And uh, what we're going to do is have the portal that he's looking at uh, showing sort of a forest scene on the other side. Now, granted, since I want just, you know, this, this guy is kind of my subject. I don't really need the other figure or like this little bush out here. So uh, we're going to try to get rid of them. And the first way that we can approach that is by using the object remover. Um, before I do that, though, uh, I'd like to just shrink the image in half just to um, make it a little bit easier to work with resolution-wise. I have a script bound to that button that just shrinks the image in half. So having done that uh, and having now the object remover tool selected, the first part of using that tool is just drawing a line around roughly what it is that you want to have removed and being pretty generous about how that line is being drawn. And then we use the uh, box tool, whatever you want to call it afterward, um, and really just try to create a reference that's kind of in alignment with how you want this area to be filled. So this level of sky kind of matches what I'm looking for. So having set both of those two, I can just click the checkbox. And then what we'll see is it did a pretty good job, um, but we'll probably have to chase that a little bit with just some straight cloning. So um, need to select a selection tool so we can turn that selection off by right clicking, then returning back to um, just straight cloning. We'll zoom in, probably start with a lower hardness and a larger size left clicking just to create some kind of reference and then right clicking from that reference to just make it a little bit more consistent and you'll notice that i'm always using a reference on the left and then clicking to the right and this is just because there seems to be sort of a gradient of the way the sky is colored so wanting to uh, keep the keep the color, the hue, and the color consistent as I'm doing this. As we get down to where the feet are, we're going to have to probably shrink it a little bit, get a little bit closer. All right, and I think that's good enough for now. So next what we want to do is create our portal reference. And to do that, I'm going to use the vector ellipse shape and um, essentially just draw like a circle. And, and really all I would emphasize right now is getting the size right. Don't like, I mean, you can position it to kind of get a sense of where you want it to be. But before we go into particle shop, we're going to want to center this thing on the entire image. And you'll see why in a little bit. But uh, for right now, just kind of get an idea of how big you want that portal to be relative to the rest of your scene. And once you feel pretty good about that, we can just click on this center in canvas button. And then that's just going to put it right there, even though that's not where it's going to go. Ultimately, um, this is what's going to be necessary for this next phase. So once we have our circle defined, that's going to be our reference for our portal and it's overlaid on top of our image, we can do a copy merged and then paste as a new layer. And the reason we're doing this is because when I use Particle Shop, I like to only bring the brushes back, the brush strokes back as a separate layer. And so this layer essentially just becomes replaced by that. So then now we can go into effects Particle Shop, or uh, if you're not using the shortcut because you recently used it, Plugins Painter Particle Shop. All right, so now that Particle Shop has launched, um, the primary brush that we're going to use is, um, I believe it, it shows up in multiple packs, uh, but the one, the one that I'm using is Spaced Out Cluster. And part of the reason for using this one, if you see if I kind of draw on it, what you'll see is it, it has that sort of perfect look of the really bright, you know, fiery source and then these sort of like sparks and embers coming off of it. And, and this, in my opinion at least, is characteristic of kind of that 
Doctor Strange is Portal. Now we're going to take two passes on this because we're going to um, have sort of the loose kind of, you know, particles floating off into the distance kind of layer. And then we're going to have the much more concentrated layer um, right around the ring. So for this first sort of pass, if you will, we're not really so much concerned with um, you know, following the circle line, for example, we're just trying to create this sort of loose distribution of of the of the particles floating out outward. We don't want it too far because you don't want the particles ending up like all over the place and in the sand and all that. But again, you know, kind of mentally keep in mind, you know, where your circle was originally. And in this case, really all you're just trying to pay attention to is how far away from the circle is it getting. If it's going all the way off your image, then it might be a little bit too big, like in my case. So we'll just bring the size down a little bit. Or if you're using a pen, um, it might just be a matter of uh, applying a little bit less pressure. All right, so now that we've created kind of our first pass of just the particles that are flying off around, we can click Save. And like I said, in my case, only saving the brush strokes. So then that shows up as its own layer back in PaintShop Pro. If we turn the ring off, you can see it's just sort of this cluster of sparks. So then what we're gonna do next is create a mask. So we'll go down to mask, the mask button and say show all. And then using this ring as our reference, we'll want to select the color black in our stroke color and then use uh, just a regular paintbrush would be perfectly fine with uh, the default shape and uh, size, you know, a decent size. Um, you can keep the hardness pretty high, not too high, um, but really all we're trying to do is just erase all the stuff in the middle. Okay, little glitch there, but uh, getting back to it. So, uh, mask layer selected, black brush uh, selected, and just painting black over that mask is going to have the effect of like erasing this whole inner region here. And so then what we're left with is sort of like the particles that are just flying off of the outer edge there. So that's good for now. So again, for our next layer of sparks being drawn, we're going to do a copy merged and then paste as a new layer once again. Except we want that not in our layer group. So out here. And then we will launch particle shop once again. So now back in Particle Shop, we are going to be using the same uh, cluster, spaced out cluster brush, except this time we're going to um, you know, make our brush size a little bit smaller. And so the idea is now we want you know, these, these lines to be much more concentrated and for the sparks to be much more following the, the trace of our circle. And one thing you'll notice is that like as I'm kind of doing this, I'm I'm kind of just drawing little little streaks across. Like I'm not trying to draw one continuous line. And I think this also helps in creating the effect. Admittedly, I am using a drawing tablet in this case. I don't often use it, but just because of the nature of what we're trying to do with the particles, I have found that it works a little bit better when using a tablet trying to draw along this circly edge. Okay, so once we have a good amount of particles, both extending outward and inward, then we can click Save. Save only brushes once again. And this is now on its own new layer. So now we can turn off our circle completely and this is looking all right. You know, it's kind of, it's heading in the right direction. Um, but it's not quite there. So what we're going to do is turn the background off as well. And this is this is uh, the reason why we kept this circle in the middle is we're going to do a copy merged and then paste as a new layer. 
and then we can turn these two off, our originals off. And then with this merged sort of spiral, what we want to do is effects, distortion effects, and twirl. Now this, this may or may not produce what it is that you're looking for. What's interesting about the twirl distortion is it seems to kind of do it uh, in relation to the dimensions of your image, but it is going to twirl it about the center of the image. Uh, I think for my case, uh, I, I, th I would rather have that twirl be a little bit more consistent than it's showing up here. So what we can actually do is say copy. Actually, what I want to do is turn off the background and then I want to say copy merged and paste as a new image. And then what I can do is just do like a cropping. And then really what I want to do is just make sure the circle is as close to the middle as, as it can be, not trying to lose any of my particles, and then do effects, distortion effects once again, and twirl. And then now we'll see that that twirl is a little bit more consistent, right? It's not, it's not quite flaring off in sort of an oblong kind of a shape. So then now we have our twirled sort of fire particles. All right, so we've got our ring back into our original image. For some reason, there was a problem and I had to actually save the ring as a separate PNG to maintain my transparency. But um, So now we're back with our ring that looks like a portal. And now we have the freedom to reposition it wherever we want it to be. So maybe a little bit more like at the height where he would be viewing it. And this also can be the time where you can adjust um, if you want to distort it a little bit. So like in this case, if I wanted it to be a little bit more oval, then I can do that. And then as we discussed earlier, um, because of the fact that the ring is going to be in front of him, we're going to want to create uh, another layer of him on top. So we can duplicate the background and drag that duplicate of the background to the front. And since there's some pretty good separation between the sky and the figure, we can very simply just use the background eraser and then just allow some of that detail to come through. All right, there we go. So now having gone through whatever whole mess that was all about, but essentially now by background erasing this top layer here, if we were to kind of turn everything off so you can see it a little bit more clearly what's happening, um, we're just trying to isolate the main figure so that it looks more like he's standing in front of that portal when it's turned on. And then we have the rest of the background still available. So then all that's left now at this point is to just replace kind of what's in the middle of this portal with the image that we want. So if I bring that forest picture back in and I say copy and then I want to paste it underneath the fire ring probably scale it so that the scene looks a little bit more in alignment with him kind of looking at a scene that's kind of far off in the distance in the portal and then what we can do is create a mask and say show all. And then we'll go back to our regular brush and maybe with a yeah, slightly lower hardness, um, we're just going to paint black to kind of get rid of all this extra stuff so that all that's left is the image of that forest kind of coming through the portal. And that's it. That's basically the technique. You can see it's really just a matter of working with layers in PaintShop Pro and then drawing the, you know, sort of circular sparks with Particle Shop. 
And I apologize for all the glitches that were occurring in the video. My computer must have been in some weird state right when I did this tutorial. I don't believe it's PaintShop Pro because I've gone through this entire procedure a couple of times before and didn't have any problems. But as a final note, uh, also for folks who become patrons, you'll get the PSP image file as a part of this demo, which includes a copy of that fire ring that was created in Particle Shop, so you don't even have to recreate it if you just want to reuse that one. Uh, but folks who also want to try to recreate the technique but don't have Particle Shop, uh, I have a custom brush tip that I created that will also be available to uh, patron folks. Anyway, that's it for me. If you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you would like to get updates of new content I post, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page, which is on the link on the screen. And I'll see you guys next time.